Hey everybody, I am here with Paul from Custom Reptile Habitats. You may recognize him and his enclosures from our video where we upgraded Nearly Headless Nick, our blind garter snake, into his new mansion of an enclosure. And we actually loved it so much that Paul and I have been talking back and forth and we're very excited to announce that we are launching a snake discovery exclusive version of that habitat. We also are launching a snake discovery decor kit for that habitat. In today's video, we were going to go through, show you how to put it together, both the enclosure and the new uh, decor kit, step by step. I'm going to be here to help Emily and it's pretty easy to do and we'll go through it. We are also accompanied by this adorable piebald ball python and we are borrowing him from our local reptile shop, Twin Cities Reptiles. Thank you so much for letting us borrow him for the show because we forgot to bring a snake of our own for this video, so we're borrowing him. We meant to bring a snake today because we are not filming at home, as you can see. We are at our new facility. Facility, hence the insulation and the drywall you can see in the background. So we'll go through step by step, uh, showing you how to put the enclosure together, the decor mm -hmm. kit. Yep. It's pretty easy to do, but uh, you want some help? No, I got this. Go sure. Away. Yeah, ah! I, I got this. <laughs> Now when your enclosure first arrives, it will come in two boxes. I'll get to the second box in a little bit, but this is your main box. They actually put the um, instructions right on top, so that's easy to find. But your first step with this is just to unpack everything, take everything out of the box and lay it out. Oh, look at that. That logo looks so cool on the front. Everything that the kit comes with and let's go through it all together. This is the back of the enclosure, the front of the enclosure, the top, the screen top, and this is a 50% screen although it can also come in a larger 100% screen for more ventilation and that's the style we would recommend for drier species of reptiles like say your bearded dragon. Next we have your sides on the left and right and then these two panels on the end here are your base and it comes with a double base for extra support. For the smaller things you have your tracks for each of the four sides. It also comes with silicone along with a gasket to seal all of the gaps in the panels. Next you have your handles for the door and your weather stripping to help seal the gap in between the two glass doors. And finally of course you have your lock. So all of this comes together in that box. In a separate box Padded and cushioned is your glass, the two glass panels for the front. That is in a separate box though and we'll get to that in a little bit. Step two requires a hard surface, so you might want to do this on the floor. But basically what we have here is the back of the enclosure laying flat on the floor and we are going to be putting in the uprights in each corner. But before you put these into place, you want to make sure you have this in the right orientation. So, so that it's not upside down. Make sure you know in which direction this flag is pointed because you want this to be that way, not upside down. Not at the, that it's the end of the world, but that would get annoying if it was upside down. For the uprights, just make sure that the tracks are facing inside of the enclosure, of course. It doesn't matter which direction they go on, but once you have it oriented in the right way, kind of snug them into place. And then you're gonna want a rubber mallet, or you could take a piece of wood with a hammer just to protect it, but you don't wanna take a hammer to this because you might scratch it, but we're just gonna hit them in place. And these are meant to go in once, so make sure you have them in the right direction because you're not going to be able to take these out very easy. It can be done, but it's, it's tough. <laughs> Step three is to simply slide in the walls, top and the base. Now with the top, this was actually designed with reptiles specifically in mind because the screen here allows 77% of UVB to shine through, whereas most screen lids only allow about 50% of UV to shine through. And in addition, this screen has a smooth side and a rough side. The smooth side was positioned so that it is the side that faces your reptile on the inside. So they're less likely to scratch their noses at all. And finally, the screws here have a pan head, which means they're rounded. So again, they're going to be smoother for your snake if they were to come in contact with it. But this does mean that when you're putting the, the lid in place, which this side facing me, this is actually the top of the enclosure. I know it's on its back right now. But make sure you have all of these rougher bits facing the outside of the enclosure. So we're just going to slide this into place here. So is that actually the top of the enclosure? I think so. Yep, that's the top. 
So that means this is the base of the enclosure and it's a double layer base. We're just gonna put in the first layer right now. Now at this point, if you just have the enclosure that you're building, you would normally just put on the front and use your mallet to hit it into place, just like we did with the uprights. However, since we are installing the background and showing you how to put together the decor kit as well, we are going to keep this or save this step for later so we have the entire opening to work with. This is everything that comes with the Snake Discovery decor kit. You have your background here, the sides anyway, plants which are fireproof, you have touch-up sand and a paintbrush, you've got the water dish, ledges, cork bark, even more ledges, and another plant, your silicone tube, and finally, my favorite piece, the background. The background, the ledges, the water dish, and the wall, all the walls may look familiar, and that's because they're all made by Universal Rocks, which is the same company we're going with to build all of the habitats and decorations for our habitats at the zoo. So you will have the, the same stuff in your enclosure. The next step is to insert the gasket that it comes with to make a seal between the siding and the aluminum upright. Now it comes with four gaskets, two long ones, two short ones, and you want to use the short ones for the smaller side wall of course and then the longer gaskets for the bottom and the top and these are wedge shaped so you're going to want to make sure you uh, angle them correctly to fit that gap and make the seal so basically just follow the instructions and it'll lead you into the right direction on how to insert this in the right way and you may want to cut the end of these gaskets at an angle so that they fit and create a complete seal along the angled edge of the upright now if you don't have the decor kit you would again put on the front of the enclosure and then put these gaskets into place but but since we are showing you how to put the decor kit in, the background sits above where this gasket's going to be, so we have to put it in first. We have to put it in now. If you're confused on the direction that you put in this gasket, let me just show you. If you were to push it in here, it sticks out. It doesn't really fit very well, so it's pretty obvious if you put it in the wrong way. Whereas if you slide it in on this side, you see how this seal kind of angles outward? That's the way it's supposed to go. So we're basically just going to push this in place all the way around and we're going to have a little bit of this gasket hanging out and we'll get to that later. When you get to a corner you're going to want this gasket to turn so in order for it to turn at a sharper angle just cut a little notch in the side. Now it kind of overlaps on itself. There we go. We're just going to leave this extra stuff hanging off the side for now, but in the end, this will wrap up the front. So if you look here, the end of this gasket is flat, but you want it to be angled to line up with the angle of this aluminum upright. So you just take scissors and you cut it at an angle. So we have finished the first side and now we're just going to speed through the rest. Okay, all the gaskets are in and now we're ready for our background. For this bit, you want the enclosure laying on its back again, which is why we've reoriented it again. And we're going to take this silicone that comes with the kit. You will need to provide your own gun, of course, but you take the silicone and you want to create an outline around the edge of this back panel, minus about an inch away from the aluminum frame. You don't want to skimp out on this because you really want to make sure that background is going to sit in place. And for good measure, just add an X of it on the back too. Now if you look at the background, you can kind of see where it comes out. Like obviously here, here, maybe here. Those are actually gonna make contact with the back of the enclosure. So to help out, it doesn't hurt to add a little daub of silicone on those places too. Before you place it in, make sure you have it positioned correctly. I mean, you can put it in either way, but there is a technically a right way and a wrong way. The sides that have the flatter edge face upwards because that's gonna make a better basking platform for a reptile basically. Okay, so we'll add bits of silicone. Wonder if I can make one as a poop. We're gonna set it in like this. Look at that. Beautiful. Now if you look, it does bow up a little bit on the edges. So now is the time where you want to weigh down this background to press it into place while the silicone starts to set. So we need something heavy. What do we have heavy in the shop? Uh, we have cinder blocks back there. Oh yeah, they just brought those in for the bathroom remodel. That might be a little too heavy. Yeah, it might be, might be a little too heavy. How about paint cans? 
Ooh, paint can work. You want this to set for about four hours or so overnight if you can. So it is kind of a step-by-step -step process while you wait for the silicone to dry or, or to cure. But remember, you're only going to be building this once and it'll last forever. So we're going to come back in about four hours and we're going to continue with this build. Now that the silicone has set, we are going to move the gaskets inside of the tank. And the next step is putting the front on, which is another thing you want to do on the floor. Now you need your rubber mallet again so that you can tap the corners into place so that the frame is set. So hand me my mighty mallet. For this part, you're going to want to kind of rotate around the corners. You don't want to push one all the way in because it'll offset the rest of the uh, front. So we're just going to do a bit at a time. Make sure that the side is going into the groove, of course. Here, Ed, finish it off. That's why I keep you around. Yep, I can hammer things. Good job. So, so Emily, what are you doing here? I didn't add enough silicone the first time, so I have to add a little bit more. So like I said, be liberal with this stuff. It comes with a whole tube, just use it. So now I've put enough sealant on the backdrop and it's staying up, it has set. And we are going to affix one of these side panels here. For this part, you want to tilt the enclosure on its side, which is what I did on the table here. It comes with two of these panels, one for each side. You slide them into place. They actually fit exactly underneath the gap where the background lays. If you have a little extra, we have a strip here to show you. You can simply trim this stuff to size. One other thing to keep in mind is the cracks, the natural cracks that are in this. You probably want them to be horizontal so they match the horizontal angle of all the cracks and ledges of the background. But once you have it set in place and it looks good, you're ready for silicone. So I just yelled at Emily for throwing that piece of silicone on the ground because one of us I know is going to step on it. <laughs> think I could hit the wall with it? Probably. Think it would stick? Let's find out. I'm going to aim for that panel. This panel? Yep. Okay. Okay. Oh, I hit it. I see it. You, you hit the... Oh, there it is. Oh, no, I didn't. Never mind. There it is. It's That's like a booger. Be, it's going to be part of our building now, forever. Yep. I'm yep. leaving it there. All right. The silicone is, of course, going to go behind this panel and add a lot of it. Add it to the aluminum trim. Add it all the way around. And we're going to sneak it back here, too. I want it to be really snug because we're going to be attaching ledges to this side. There we go. Set it in place and weigh it down. Let it set, just like the backdrop. So the ledge, the exciting part, I love adding these ledges. I've never done it before, but I still love it. You're going to add silicone all around the outside. All right, now you only get to do this part once, so don't screw it up, but it's still fun. You wanna line up your ledge wherever you want it, and we're gonna set it, set it down. Now the ledges are a little bit irregular on the bottom, so if you have any gaps underneath them, try to angle the ledge upwards so it seals the top bit, which is what you're going to see viewing into the enclosure, and the bottom underneath, that's where you want your gaps to be. And once this starts to set, you can fill in those gaps with silicone, you'll touch it up with sand, and you won't even know it's there. Then just kind of set it aside. We're gonna weigh down the back with paint, and now we wait another few hours for that to set. With all four paint cans now weighing it down, we're ready just to let this sit and let the silicone cure. This you want to wait for honestly six hours at least, overnight preferred, just so it really has enough time to, to solidify. And then you're going to repeat that process with the ledges on the other side. Well, we are done with the sides of the enclosure. Looks great too. No, we're not. Uh, what about that guy over there? Don't, don't tell him about that. All right, this is a different enclosure. We have two, so we don't have to wait for that one to cure before we move on. Um, also, if anybody's wondering, this is the 100% screen, so the entire oh. top. Oh, you can tell by the screen. Yep, in. that's true. This one's a 50%, so it's less. So that one's for so more tropical or holding, temperate. This is more for desert or drier species. You're just ruining my plans, Ed. Yeah, sorry. All right, so the next step is to use silicone to fill all of the gaps between all the panels of the side and the backdrop. And if there are any with the ledges, I don't think there are with this, but just fill all the gaps with more silicone so that you can prevent, if you're doing bioactive springtails or isopods from sneaking behind there or just moisture in general. And this is just a matter of putting a bead of silicone all the way down to seal those gaps and then take your finger and slide it and smooth it all the way down. This is gonna take a while, so we're just gonna speed through it.
Now this part doesn't have to look perfect, by the way. You just need it to be functionally perfect. So just fill the gap with the silicone. We're gonna hide all this with sand in the next step. And the final step for this enclosure is to add the sand to blend in all the silicone you just used to fill the gap. So it comes with sand. We're going to just pour out these bags. You have kind of a mustard color, a slightly lighter color of, of mustard. I don't know what to call it exactly. And then you have your dark brown coloration. You have twice as much dark brown because that's gonna be the majority of the color that you use for this part. It comes with a paintbrush, so you're also gonna want to just wet the paintbrush, but you don't want it like wet, wet. You just want it damp. You only get it wet the first time. You just start with a damp brush. Then you're going to tap it a few times in this dark colored sand and do a single tap on the silicone. If you paint it, your brush is gonna get clogged full of silicone right away. So we're gonna do a few taps and then just push it basically into the silicone. It might look really dark right now, but we're going to be blending in the lighter colors on the second layer, and that'll really make this seal disappear. So the decorating can take a little while, so take your time, there's no rush on it. I feel like Bob Ross right now. Huh. Just a happy little ledge. Those mistakes have become birds. <laughs> Make a happy little seal. <laughs> If your silicone got too tacky, by the time you start this, you can just add a little bit more silicone on top for it to stick a little bit better. Once you have your layer of that dark brown on, that's when you get to blend it with these, these mustard yellows. And you can have it kind of wrap on the side a little bit to try to hide it. Now this is my first time doing it, so give me, give me some slack, guys. This is my practice round for when we do this for all of our enclosures in the zoo. So we have our first ledge done. That's, like I said, the first one I've ever done. So it might look a little off. I'm still gonna like tweak how I do things a little bit, I think, but that's the general idea. So I'm going to do this for where all of rock hits rock, basically, because I want to hide the silicone. The silicone down here doesn't matter because all that's gonna be covered in substrate. And the silicone in the front here also doesn't matter because you're not gonna see that. Same with down here. It's really just where it rock hits rock that you want to coat that silicone with the sand. Now that the silicone is all cured and the sand and all the touch-up details are done, we are going to turn this around. And this is a cool feature too, guys. We're gonna flip it over. The base here is actually a two-layer base so that if you have bioactive substrate, which gets really heavy, especially the amount that you might want for this enclosure since it's equivalent to about 80 gallons, the second layer of the base will help support all of that weight. So that's why it comes with two of these. This one, you're just going to silicone straight to the aluminum frame down here. And for this, you're going to use the tube of silicone that comes with the enclosure. Now, this means that if you get the decor kit as well, you'll have two tubes of silicone, but you'll probably go through all of it. And it is recommended to use like the entire tube for the bottom just to make sure it stays in place. When you're ready to lay the second layer of the bottom on, it's best to do this on a flat surface. And now, if you have this right side up, it'll just apply pressure from the weight of the enclosure on the base while it cures. Now it's time for my favorite part, which is decorating the enclosure. And if you get the Snake Discovery Decor Kit, remember it comes with two fire-resistant plants, a big chunk of cork bark, which works really well as a hide, and a large water dish, which also can work double as a hide because it's a bit hollow underneath. Now we're going to slide the glass doors into their tracks and just pop them into place. And now is the time where you take the weather stripping and you can attach it here in between the two layers of glass if you're using this for like a small species of snake that may be able to squeeze through there like our, our garter snake was able to because he was so little. So that's why it comes with it. And now you would also install your lock and then you are good to go. But for the sake of today's video, we are going to take the glass off so that there isn't a glare against the camera. So if you don't see this glass in the rest of the video, that's why.
So how'd I do? Not too bad. Sweet. That looks excellent. Thank you. Yeah. And as you can see, he's enjoying his new habitat already. Oh look, he's already climbing. He hasn't been in there than more than 10 minutes. Well, give him, give him places to climb, enrichment, things to rub against and climb. You're going to find they're going to use every inch of that enclosure. That's so cool. We did not put him there, guys. He went up there on his own. He is already using the ledges. That is awesome. So we, unfortunately though, have to bring that piebald ball python back to Twin Cities Reptiles because they're gonna close in about 15 minutes and it takes 16 minutes to get there. So Ed is gonna grab him and put him back and then we're gonna finish up with the video. I was surprised at how easy it was to put together. It's like yeah. bing, bang, boom, there's a nice step-by-step -step guide and then we were done. That's the first time you've done this, it looks amazing. The thing that I really like about these kits is it's predictable. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks will go out and do backgrounds. Some people have been doing backgrounds for years and they look amazing, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a bit of an art. Sometimes it's right. great, sometimes it might not. Right. This way, it's always going to look the same. You can custom, of course, but the result is going to look just like that. So you're not like fiddling with where to put rocks and all that. You right. have the background ready to go. You just slap it in place. Yep. You have your sides. You can, though, change where the side ledges go. Of like course. You don't have to copy the design we did in this enclosure. You can move them around however you want. Right. So there you have it. That's how you build the Snake Discovery exclusive habitat from Custom Reptile Habitats. And if you're looking for a way to hide the lights in this enclosure, you can get a hood for it. There is a built-in hydrometer and thermometer in here, and you take the probe and put it on like the cooler end of your enclosure just to monitor what your ambient temperature is. And yes, for those of you wondering, you can switch it from Celsius to Fahrenheit with just a button. We will have links to all of this, by the way, the snake discovery uh, enclosure, decor kit, and the hood all in the description below. So how about for those who already have an existing tank and they mm. don't necessarily want a brand new enclosure? Well, this, this decor kit we pretty much put together for this size enclosure. Mm. If you have an existing 40 gallon tank or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm common. thinking, a 40. Uh, glass tank. We've got a kit that we're putting together for that. Oh, and perfect. I'll be able to show you real soon on how to do that. Oh, right. We could do another video showing how to convert a tank to something similar using right. the decor in the background and all of that. Right. Okay, well, we'll do that yeah. too. We'll make another video showing how to convert your existing tank in case you're not ready for a full setup like this, even though you can't get much better than this, honestly. Although I should mention, the Snake Discovery one will also come in a black trim in case you're not a fan of the green. But there's lots of options on the website and we'll show you how to convert your existing tank over in a following video. For those of you who are interested in this habitat that just launched, we're so excited. Or if you're interested in the habitat and the decor kit, all, like all of this together, we will have links to all of those in the description below. So we would like to thank our Patreon backers for watching today's video and everybody for watching as well. And I'd like to thank Paul for coming here today and helping us out with all of this and helping with the launch of this product. Paul is also the one who is helping consult us build all of the enclosures in our zoo. So we are so lucky to have him and all of his knowledge and expertise. We'd have no idea what we're doing with these zoo enclosures <laughs> if it weren't for you. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. We'd also like to thank Twin Cities Reptiles for letting us borrow their beautiful piebald bald python that they had available. They have all sorts of marks available too in case anyone's interested. And finally, for those of you who are still watching, we are going to be giving away one of these units fully loaded. Actually, we're going to give away this one that I just built. You can have the enclosure I put together. We're going to do a competition of sorts. You can get it for free. I don't know exactly what the rules are going to be. It's just somebody who's watching this video, you're going to own this someday. The competition will probably have to do with our grand opening here at the facility, and we'll give you more details in a future video when we've kind of nailed those all down. So thank you everybody again for watching, and we'll see you next time.